Alrighty, what's going on guys? Got another tutorial here for you. This is basically, uh, this is for your PlayStation Portable, and we're going to be talking about converting your PS1 bin files to eBoot. And basically what that is, is just, uh, you're taking your bin file, uh, which is your basic game. Uh, so I'll, I'll show you a bin file real quick. Right here, I got a Crash Bandicoot Warped bin, uh, and you have your Q file as well, but we're going to completely ignore that. And, uh, you're going to convert it to an eboot like I did here with uh, the Crash Bandicoot. And what that enables you to do is you can just pop that in a folder on your PSP and uh, you can run it. So what do we have to do to do this? Well, there's going to be two things that you're going to need to download, maybe four or five, depending if you want to customize the eboot itself. Um, first, you're going to need to download the PSGUI 300 beta. I will have the link in the description below. And uh, if we double click on this and open that up, you're going to see all this fun stuff in here. You got your data, PSX, custom, themes, pop station, GUI, execute, which is what we're going to be using for the application, obviously, and the GUI, uh, a readme file, and a VPPNG, and a Z library. So after you extract all of that to your desktop into a folder called pop station GUI, which is what I did to keep it organized, uh, you can download any ps1 rom uh, if it's an iso you can still extract the bin file from the iso using a uh, extraction program you just have to like uh, for example i have power iso for my isos but if i wanted to use uh, winrar i could just right click on it and uh, open with right here and you select open with and then it will list the other applications as well so I'm just going to uh, select the WinRAR archive here, obviously, and open this up. Shut up. All right, so now that I've opened this up, as you can see, there's my Q file right there. That's what I was talking about. We're going to completely disregard that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop this uh, Spyro the Dragon .bin to my desktop. So I'll have to copy over. All right, so now that that's copied over, uh, I'm going to exit that, and now we have our Spyro the Dragon bin file. What I'm going to do with that now is I'm going to open up my PopStation uh, GUI folder here, and I'm just going to copy that uh, Spyro the Dragon bin file right over to here so it's easy to find. <sighs> Shut up. Thank you. There. All right, so I copied it over to my bin files folder in my uh, directory that I have for my pop station GUI uh, on my desktop here, and now I'm just going to run the GUI application. Now what we can do is we can browse for a certain file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to browse for the um, pop station GUI folder here. This is why we create that folder. Uh, select the bin files, and I'm going to select Spyro the Dragon. And I'm going to open that. Okay, so what you're going to do now is once you've selected this file, uh, your Spiral the Dragon bin, and we're going to convert it to an eBoot here with compression level of 9, uh, which is the best compression, so I would recommend doing that. Spiral the Dragon is the game title here, and uh, we can also go to Customize eBoot. I've already put in an icon uh, spiral cover. Uh, I'm believing that that is going to be the image that shows up when you select the game from your game section on your PSP, but I guess I'm going to find out, and then I have the background image here as well, which I'm going to attempt. This is what it's showing it's going to look like, but I don't know if that's actually what it's going to look like, so let's find out. So all I'm going to do now is hit go. And now it's going to convert to an eboot. So allow that to do that. Alrighty, so now that the conversion is done, you can just hit yes. Uh, let's see, if you wish, you can disable this feature by editing the one. Oh, no, we don't want to convert. We don't want to move it to the PSP yet because we don't have the PSP hooked in. So now what we got to do is we got to hook our PlayStation Portable up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit this program here. And I'm going to open up my PopStation GUI folder. And I'm just going to scroll over to my bin files, and you'll see there's a Spyro the Dragon folder. Open that up, and there's our eboot. We have just officially created this eboot here. And uh, if we select it, let's see. 
how big is it 359 megabytes that's not too bad so let's uh get our psp connected here all right so once you're connected to your psp you're going to locate your psp folder and you're going to go to your game folder and you're just going to take this uh ooh, let's go back real quick the spiral the dragon folder or whatever eboot you have converted and drag that over to your game folder so let that copy over like so and i keep on being finally reminded that 2.0 usb is very slow i was using my 3.0 the other day wow that copies fast okay so now that we copy that file over uh again i copied my spiral the dragon folder over to my uh usb for my psp uh, i'm using a psp go so i'm using the system memory uh, but it's uh, the PSP and then inside the game folder, you just copy your newly created eboot file with inside its own folder into your game folder. And once you've done that, now it's time that we go to the PSP. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so here we are back at the PSP. Basically, I'm just going to pull up my firmware here. System information is 6.61 Pro C. Uh, I'm using a PSP Go. And uh, obviously, this is a PSP Go right here with the clock, so you can tell that it is a PSP Go, not lying. And uh, yeah, so what you're going to do is after you put your file and everything on your either system storage or your memory stick in your game folder, uh, just come over to your game category. Now we can see that the pictures that I selected are probably too high of a pixelation rate, uh, which is why they're probably coming up like that. Um, but the background I selected is there, and the um, image pick is there as well so they are in the right spot they're just too big of an image for it to I guess resize it so and I did just test this with my remote joy to see but it won't boot and show you on the remote joy my ps1 emulation for some reason because if I go to my recovery menu and I go to my plugins on my system storage I have my pops enabled for my remote joy and i think this usb uh for pops uh, prx is just not the properly updated one which is why it's not working so i'm gonna have to figure that out but it does work so it is pretty cool and then other than that uh if we go to information here you can see it's 360 megabytes and uh, the original file was like 640 megabytes. So it did cut it down pretty decently. So you could save on some memory space for two. So for all of you who want to download some ISOs or PS1 games and uh, extract the bin files and convert them to eBoot or just download a ROM of uh, a PlayStation 1 game and convert it to an eBoot, you can do that with this uh, PopStation GUI and you can save up a little bit of memory space too. So, rate, comment, and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys later. Again, the links will be down in the description uh, for the download of the PopStation GUI. Unfortunately, I will not have the link for uh, any eBoots, but uh, if you need any, let me know. So, uh, I'll talk to you guys later, and enjoy.